Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's q and I'm your host, Mod Aliza, and joining us today is Mod Ash. Hello. Along with our wonderful PvP crew, we have Pjorsfam. Good day, everybody. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> uh, we have West Ham. <laughs> Good morning, fellas. And we also have Dino. Hello. Hey, and they're all going to be here to discuss some of your PvP arena reward questions. Um, I probably should have said this whilst I was introducing you, but never mind. I'll just ask how everyone is doing and uh, what have you been up to this week? Uh, I'll start with you, Ash. I've been at work, which is a change, in fact. I haven't been to the office for so much for years now, uh, and it is delightful to be back in you know, a nicely decorated environment with... Um, free tea and coffee on tap and um all the other perks of you know working in an office i've missed it thank you all right it's good to see you back and i'm sure you're making uh full use of the free tea <laughs> uh how are you doing today pure spam and what have you been up to this week anything interesting happening on the uh the old pure scene yeah a bit of pking here and there uh, i've been playing my pure iron man a lot i have been kind of putting off or procrastinating getting my cult necklace and the Slayer grind for years. And I finally got round to getting 93 Slayer, so I got my cult necklace. And I've been using that, doing some scaled raids, uh, looking for those purple lights. Um, yeah, can't complain. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you here. How about you, West Ham? How have you been? What have you been up to this week? Uh, I've been doing good. I've been just uh, testing out the new PJ timer in the wilderness. And yesterday I spent a day or not entirety of the day, but I spent a bit of time just testing out the new max hits of the Void. Well, not the Void, but the thing that <laughs> resembles Void. The uh, Calamity, if I'm pronouncing that right. You got it. Mm -hmm. Well, we have plenty of chance to talk about that uh, throughout today's stream, but let's wrap up with Dino. How are you doing today and what have you been up to this week? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. Uh, similar to West Ham, just basically streaming every single day, PKing. Uh, trying the new PJ timer. It's quite nice not being restricted to the caves, uh, as we have been sort of the last six months. So yeah, probably the nicest thing so far. <laughs> You've been let out to roam around. Although I gather that there are only real like two major hotspots at the moment: at the altar and at the, the thirty line. So you kind of yeah. like move from one area and put into another. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes. Yeah, you see the same name, it's just at a different spot, but it's still it's a change of scenery. <laughs> I look forward to us getting to do more across the surface. Um, heck, if we could even take some of the things Abyss was posting about last year in his famous video, um, I'd be very glad to get us some dev time for some of those. On the other hand, um, heck, if we could do another Bounty Hunter instead, maybe that would go down even better. Both would be ideal, of course, but um, can't have everything at the same time. Um, but anyway, hopefully we can get you some more hotspots, at least a Wilderness Boss rework should, which should come with more loot um, may attract some people to that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Just anything. Uh, Bounty Hunter or updates will take anything, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think the players would definitely prefer Bounty Hunter. Well, yeah, That's a sense of advice, mostly. Got. <laughs> a lot of asks for Bounty Hunter out there, and hopefully, we'll be able to be. Uh, focusing on that later this year, but I believe there is a question regarding Bounty Hunter, so I'll just save any talks for when that happens. Uh, before then, I just have a couple of announcements to go over, and we've got some content that we want to show from our players. Uh, first of all, exclamation mark game update. You can get your hands on the new PvP arena rewards in our rewards beta. Try out all of the new equipment and let us know your thoughts. You can find more info on these, as well as the League's 3 rewards, as well, and, uh, as, well as Pulse 76 changes in our game update blog. So exclamation mark game update, send you a link to that. We also have exclamation mark launcher. The new Jagex launcher is in open beta. You can now access old school RuneScape and all of your other Jagex favorites all from the one place. You can check out all of the information and download the launcher with exclamation mark launcher. Now in terms of user content, the first one is from Presleek titled Illinois Pet Walking Services. Aww. <laughs> Little popper dial. And how much GP you have to pay to have those pets walk? Do they look like a little bit of a uh, nightmare? I've just noticed the Jad. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh... a. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, the poor well, mole you know. is well. Oh, the mole and the uh, chinchompa cuddling up. All right, the next one comes in from uh, Ranyard, and it's titled Level 30 IRL. It's a nice birthday cake with a twisted bow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy to celebrate. celebrate. It's making me hungry. I'm it not is. It lie. looks like a nice cake. <laughs> yeah, I know. I said just before I joined as well, I'm starving. I've had like one yogurt today for, for food. I really should have ate before I came on stream, but you know. Um, all right, the next one coming in is from Two Pounder. And the title is My Character Fighting Zora. Wow, that is awesome. Quite cool, to be fair. Yeah, no, I'll That's write that. Sick. It's like a canvas oil painting, is it, I think? By the looks of it? Yeah, yeah. It looks like, yeah. It's awesome. I really like seeing uh, the <laughs> real-life art as opposed to digital art. Not that I don't like digital art. It's just mm. um, it's so common nowadays to see digital pieces um, shared on our subreddit, at least. Is nice. Maybe somebody will make an NFT of the physical thing somehow. <laughs> I wish the environment at Zora looked a bit more like that. <laughs> Quite apart from how great the snake in the sky look, um, Zora's Island has always looked a little bit Spartan to me. Yeah, it's a little bit bland. Maybe that's just the way that Zora likes it. So here's a thing I mapped that, and which is why I don't mind criticising it on stream. Um, I'd understood that the artists would get to um, do a polish pass afterwards and um, you know fix up Zolandra and the island and maybe pretty them up a little but then they didn't due to I think some unfortunately time sick leave and uh, so the environment mapping there is mine still um, and I'm not an artist <laughs> could have been I mean people enjoyed playing with the thing regardless so it didn't I don't, I don't regret us, you know, carrying on with the update, but it could have looked better. The soundtrack oh, different is always incredible as well, isn't it? Oh, Big fan of that uh, one. Soundtrack's mine, thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, we have from Lord John. this is, or Lord Yawn, uh, Drew, my buddy's UIM. That poor goblin in the background. <laughs> yeah, that goblin's in not the back. Really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think if carrying? John Lennon were were a massive killer, um, that might be how he'd look from the glasses. Um. Interesting one. All right. Lastly, we have from Uber Digger seventy seven, uh, titled "Elemental Runes." Nice little keychains. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now, oh, actually, this is a surprise. I wasn't expecting this. Apparently, before we jump into the questions, there's a little teaser for what's coming up in next week's game update. Um, so cue the trailer. Wow, that nice. genuinely was news to me. <laughs> Gardens of the Rift <laughs> comes out next week. Yeah, and apparently I there's a lot of keychains. <laughs> quite fitting, though. Yeah, true. Actually, pretty good job. We actually had that one beforehand. It would have been interesting if it was, uh, yeah, the UIM one before. Okay. Well, uh, there you have it, folks. Next week, got into the rift. So look forward to that. Pretty big update. I'm going to be uh, sinking my teeth into some RuneCraft games. But now we have some questions regarding PvP, because that's what we are here for at the end of the day. So we've got everything out of the way. Let's jump straight into it. And the first question comes in from iSpace Cadet. And they have asked, what are the requirements to vote in the PvP rewards poll? Is it time spent in PvP worlds, or do other related activities count, such as Last Man Standing, Castle Wars, etc.? Also, when is the poll likely to happen, and when can we vote? 
So I believe the the exact requirements are still unconfirmed, but I believe it's going to involve kill counts. Um, that will include kill counts from the PvP worlds as well as the standard ones, um, but uh, not just spending time on the PvP world, say, as a skiller. LMS is also likely to be included. Um, Castle Wars, I think, not so much. Um, the poll is likely to happen in April, and um, you'll be able to vote then. Nice. Brilliant. Thanks, Ash. Okay. For what it's worth, uh, oh, I should clarify, kill count. Uh, we took a record of people's kill count totals as they were about two weeks ago before we started talk planning this poll so that um, anyone who's um, hoping that they can declare themselves a PvP by killing their mate 20 times now or something like that, <laughs> I'm afraid we already took a log of this one. Okay, that's a nice little security measure. <laughs> All right, thanks for the answer. Uh, next question from Bad at Naming, please help. They have said, Tons of PvP polls in the past all failed, offering anything from best in slot PvP gear to tradables to unlocks, and lucrative PvP options often get criticism for affecting non-PvP parts of the game and being abused, like the issues Bounty Hunter faced. This time around, it seems like the proposal is untradable alternatives to popular PvP gear. What made you go with this approach and why do you think it will be more successful? The items are untradable because um, as the question itself says, things do get abused. Bounty Hunter faced those issues with gold farmers rocking up and um, they, of course, aren't interested in a fair or real fight. They'll just kill each other as fast as possible to maximise reward per time. And they will therefore get the rewards a lot faster than a real player will. And while we... You know, one can tolerate a little bit of um, farming on the side, but it shouldn't be disproportionately better than what real players are getting from playing the content properly. It just shouldn't. So, um, we've gone with untradables to make it less appealing to gold farmers and other abusers. In an ideal world, of course, it, we'd be able to just um, well, launch anything we liked and have the support team get rid of all of them in real time for us. That would be the ideal. Uh, realistically, didn't seem to work for Bounty Hunter, wouldn't want to try it again now and just hope, because um, I don't think it would go any better, hence the untradables. Now as for um, the criticism that PvP options of affecting non-PvP parts of the game and being abused there, um, a lot of the things we've pitched are very restricted insofar as you can't actually do PvM across most of the game with them which um, cuts down on how useful they are as items, but may get us away from the complaint about these things, you know, being BIS for PVM activities or affecting PVM in ways that wouldn't be appreciated. And also the fact that if the um, poll is only open to people who satisfy those the checks we discussed in the last question, um, trying to restrict the impact to actual PvP seems more than usually appropriate. I think another thing about the um about the rewards and the game the game mode in, in general is like the whole point of MMOs is kind of that progression aspect. And in PvP it's kind of just about building up that bank and you know slaying people for the for the items and getting getting rewards. But with the, the new PvP arena we also have an ELO system coming in of course. So you're gonna like see yourself kind of getting to the higher levels, trying to get to a higher rank which another ma is another massive part about the PvP arena. I think that's going to make a lot of people want to like, really grind it out and uh, a nice competitive aspect too, which I'm really looking forward certainly, to. Certainly hope so. Mm -hmm. It's very much new territory for us. Um, give or take the Burthorp Games Room, which um, might have been an early attempt at inventing an ELO system, uh, ELO, ELO system back in 2004-ish. Um, this is very new for the team to try and deal yeah. with. I don't think we're going to be able to have it as mathematically precise as a true one would ideally be, but I do hope that having a decent rank will be seen as a form of prestige, and yeah. um, that there'll be those who do think it's worth going for. Also, in future, you know, we did 
PvP All-Stars some years ago, a one-off mm -hmm. invitational tournament. Well, it was All-Stars because, as I understand it at the time, we picked a, boat, a load of famous people and invited them to come fight. Um, hello to uh, possibly some of you. Uh, but um, in future, if we were picking players who had high ranks because of their rank, um, that might be a way of you know, spreading the attention around a lot more people and um, picking up some of the people with the talent out there, um, even if they haven't yeah, established themselves really so well promising. online so far. Yeah, really I don't cool. want Kieran to be quite excited about that possibility. Let's hope it can go that way. That sounds promising, if anything. And then at the same time, as long as like the high elo ranks generate more reward than what you would at like a lower elo, that to me sounds good. Quite understandable. I haven't seen the balancing yet myself. Um, we may also have some incentive not to make it, not to provide an in-game benefit for boosting your rank, because with the best will in the world, people are always going to find ways of manipulating this stuff. Yeah. And um, the less benefit they get from doing so, the less, um, well, the more likely it is that it will only be done by people who actually care about it and are fighting for real. <laughs> but um, I also get why we'd want more reward if possible. I'm interested to hear from um, West Hammer Dino on this one, actually. But sorry, I'm just locking you out of the uh, answer pure spam but oh. how do you feel about moving away from traditional drops into the new pvp arena rewards because they are untradeable and the value that you know the wealth that you'll get will be from the repair costs which we've not actually spoke about yet uh, publicly and mentioned what they are but given the power level of the items i'd imagine it would be relatively significant but you would be seeing a pile of cash as opposed to you know an epic item drop into the floor um, you want to take a first time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sorry. It's not like, it's definitely not like traditional, but uh, as far as loot key, well, like loot keys have been out now. So I think a lot of people have mm -hmm. gone past the items on the floor already. Um, and we're sort of, you're getting used to seeing keys now. Um, so I wouldn't mind, say, opening a key and seeing loads of cash in there rather than some items. Um, obviously, it won't be all the time because all the old gear will still be gear, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for myself as well. I was a massive fan of like original LMS. Uh, I know high stakes LMS was quite popular when it first got released. Bodhi even got it active or when it died out a little bit. Uh, so I'm not against it either, honestly. I feel like well, as long as me and Dino have been doing it, I, it doesn't really matter what we get, if I'm honest. Like obviously a big kill is very hype, but uh, it, it gets a bit boring like the longer you do it. Okay. All right. That's. I mean, that's good to know because I imagine that, in all fairness, if if this was to work out well with the PvP um, arena rewards, then future PvP rewards would probably follow a very similar um, design, just again mm -hmm. to prevent or disincentivize the whole uh, gold farming aspect of it. For like for, for some, I'd imagine that. Yeah. One exactly. Suggestion. Like that. <laughs> One suggestion that I had coming from a couple friends of mine as well was like, what happens when you have all the rewards from the PvP arena? Like, what's the incentive to continue? And then, uh, I don't know if this is something that you guys actually want to do, but instead, let's say, of having to use cash to repair the items, what about spending points to repair them? Assuming it is very expensive. Mm -hmm. I think the only problem with that would be that you would essentially then be converting points into gold. So it would then bring gold your incentive to farm. Yeah. I think another you, incentive you to farm is farm get points. Oh, go on, sorry. This one? Like you've got the uh, the imbue rings as well as part of the rewards. And like right now, for example, on IPK, I don't really want to use the bee ring uh, unless it's imbued to get like obviously double the strength bonus to it. And I don't want to do nightmare zone every time I die. So at least you can yeah, that's very much what do that, that was for. Yeah, which is really nice. Yeah. The, the hope is that some of them would be cons would mm -hmm. some of them would be consumable. Um, I mean, the imbue scroll is the main one that's consumable, to be honest. And I'd expect it to be relatively cheap in the shop, because, I mean, just as you don't want to spend hours grinding Nightmare Zone, you might also not want to spend hours grinding this in between PK trips. So um, I expect it's going to be relatively cheap. Um, nice. Not so good for bringing people back to keep earning. 
but I'd hope it's a reason to pop in occasionally. And also those blighted sacks might be of a little use as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everyone. Um, the next question comes from Krebus, and they have said, how did the idea of PvP reward, PvP arena rewards come to life, and what was the thought process going into designing this? Truth be told, I wasn't actually part of the um, original designing, um, so I can't honestly say how it came to life. I believe, from what I've read and seen, that um, there was some desire to let PvPers get access to stuff that's otherwise locked behind things they you know, don't want to do, like grinding Nightmare Zone for imbues, or can't do, such as returning to Ape Atoll if you've got a build that rules that out, and um, ways of making that kind of thing accessible. Um, also, some interest in not just hitting the standard um, builds um, in the hope that by putting things a little bit higher than the standard builds, it might give people a little incentive to change their build. Now, we've had a lot of strong opinions about whether that's a good move or a bad move. But I think that's where it was going in the first place. And of course, the overriding design goal that this stuff is untradeable and doesn't turn into money in any significant way. I mean, ultimately, you, even the, the ornament kits, you die in the wilderness, something gets passed to BK. But um, we don't expect it to be enough to warrant a gold farmer army turning up like we've seen in other content. Great, thank you, Ash. I think the only thing that I would add to that is just the, the final point of just giving PvPers a route to gear up through PvP. Um, as opposed to doing other content, which they'll still have to do for various different unlocks, quest rewards especially. But um, currently there's no way that you can get gear that works in PvP by doing just PvP. So this was a way to, to address that, essentially. Um, the next question yeah, been, doesn't have a name. A oh, sorry, West Ham. Sorry. Uh, no, I was going to say there's been quite a lot of backlash about like, well, at least from what I've seen, about uh, essentially bee gloves coming from it. Which I don't think, personally, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, since Barrow Gloves is kind of like a base for all the rest of the quests in the game. You can't really kit out an account fully just with B Gloves. Maybe if it was like 2015 or 2014 you could do that. But you still need DS2, MM2 and stuff like that. Which all require a large amount of quest points in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vengeance, Barrage, all that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. Okay, the next question is, what are the plans for free-to-play status of the PvP arena, given that the Jewel Arena is a free-to-play minigame? Are you going to provide a non-competitive mode like for LMS? Well, I know this one. Um, firstly, yes, there'll be a non-competitive ability to just have a fight against whoever you meet. Now, on the PvP arena worlds, you'll be using um, artificial builds that are just put on your account as a loadout. Um, stats come with it if you're on however on the non-pvp arena worlds the standard game worlds um well the senior will be standing sitting there so we've no particular reason to stop you clicking on another player and saying you want to go have a fun fight with them in the um in the box and um that we've no reason to stop you doing that as a free-to-play as well so um yes um casual non-competitive duels will still be allowed and that includes a free to play thank you great thanks ash we've got some questions now that uh maybe the creators can get involved in and let us know your thoughts uh the first one comes in from baru and we've kind of answered part of this already because i mentioned about the repair costs and that's how you'll make your money but their question is, what do the content creators think about the new armors and prayers? Currently, an obvious issue for many is loot. All these new rewards are untradeable and increased power level. Accounts will have more power, more defense, more KO potential than before with no apparent cost. Is this healthy for PvP? So the cost side, I think, you know, we've covered, but if you want to maybe comment on how much you think they should be worth uh, to repair, that would probably be a good way to, to come into this. Otherwise, just your general thoughts and feelings on 
the armors and prayers and maybe we start with pure spam and then go west ham and dino to wrap up yeah sure um well i'm more of a edge style pka uh, in terms of no overheads the other two mostly do tri bridding and like deep wilderness style fights um in terms of edge style i'd say i'm a, I'm a pure pka predominantly although i do a lot of main pk and i've got a med level as well i'd say the pure one should be maybe a few mil based on what the current best in slot pure pk and gear is worth um and the Berserk one or 50 defense one, I think you've suggested it has to be. You have to be like a little bit up from that. So maybe maybe like five to 10 mil. And then I guess the, the top one, I'd like to see it at around 50 mil to 100 mil because that's currently what best in slot is at that level in terms of like full bandos um, or, or armadillo or whatever people are using. Um, in terms of is it like much, much stronger increasing power level and undoubtedly like it is, it's, it's a huge buff. You're getting a lot of max hits. I was testing it earlier and um, I'm actually quite excited for that personally because a lot of the metas nowadays revolve around people sitting like almost full HP and RNG being like a huge element in terms of trying to, trying to get people um, KO'd. So uh, the higher damage potential you have, obviously RNG is still going to play a role but being able to, you know, hit more damage and, and, and kill people a bit easier. So to make it a lot more fun, both for players that are that are getting started, as well as for the more experienced players that are really know what they're doing. Um, when people sesh for for a long time and, and people don't don't die. As for the new prayers, uh, I think originally it was it was planned for seventy prayer. Was the the humble piety was going to be available to everyone, and you change that to chivalry only for pures, um, which I think is a good change because otherwise pures would have been really really overpowered. Um, and I and I like the I like the changes personally. Um, obviously, always being a, a pure, like I said before, high offense, kind of low defense, glass cannon kind of build has always been a favorite of mine. It's really unique in, in old school, and I think it's a really awesome kind of play style. So um, overall, I'm I'm really excited. Um, but I'm not as much from main PK as the other guys are. So I guess they've got more of an understanding and opinion about where they feel the the max stuff kind of um, sits based on everything else. Yeah. Uh, I had a little discussion with Ian and Kemp Q mm -hmm. prior to all of this. I think it definitely adds a lot of max hits. I agree with that. Uh, it is, I'd say it is overpowered, but it, I guess that is a bit uh, iffy. I honestly think like adding a few max hits isn't that big of a deal. I believe you get like seven out of it compared to max strength, uh, or unless you're comparing it to Torva, then it's only like three or four. But obviously the cost of these have to be adjusted for how good they are. Uh, the max, the main set or med level set, whichever one it is, still has to, in my opinion, cost at least 150 to like 200 mil if it's going to be able to make you hit a 90. Uh, you can also barrage something like a 42 fire surge, I believe it was a 51, and then a dragon crossbow spec like a 76. That's quite high DPS and it still adds that extra element of removing damage while, in my opinion, I think the armor set should probably make you take more damage, uh, similar to what Aggression did on DMM. I think mm. Aggression did something like it made you deal 15% more, but you took 20% more damage. Yeah, yeah, I'd say with uh, the armor, if it's if RuneScape sort of going down the direct, <coughs> sorry, uh, if the uh, game sort of going down the direction of higher max hits and like more KOs. Um, I don't think the, the gear that, for example, this gear, that if you can get a 98 GS, you shouldn't have any defensive bonuses with it. Like, you know, there's a 10%, uh, if you have the, the right helm on, you take 10% less damage from the other style. Um, I think it would be better without anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that if you do use it, and you do want to hit them higher hits, you have to, like, risk it, if that makes sense as well. Like, you have no defense. Um, and I also agree with West Ham that it should be incredibly expensive because, from my opinion, 90 is a bit too high. Uh, but I also see what you're trying to do because no one really dies at the moment if, if you don't want to. Um, so I do understand why there's higher max hits coming into the game. But yeah, I am a bit skeptical of this. Maybe a little bit too high. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the reduction of, of percentage damage that comes with the helmets. I, I like what you're trying to do there. And it's a cool idea and concept like to play into the whole um to rebalance the combat triangle like if you get the right helmet on then you're taking less damage from the different attack style um but overall i think the whole kind of like i was saying before high risk high reward um like you're going to do more damage but you're also going to mm -hmm. be taking a lot more damage and the other thing as well is like where these armors play a role i think the question was something about um 
you know, more, more power, people gonna be too powerful. Like you can still use the normal gear that we currently have in place. And if you're fighting people that are using these gears, they're still gonna be, you know, as killable, if not more killable, because they've got lower defense. Obviously they've got a higher chance to kill you, but if you manage to, you know, to defeat them, then you're gonna get a big reward for that. Um, so if you, let, let's say, you, you know, you, you fight this guy 10 times, you might, you might die more often than not. You've only got to kill them once and then you make profit. Um, so it gives you that kind of um, that risk versus reward element too, if you choose to fight those players, which I think is really nice as well. Yeah, I think the armor itself has a bigger, uh, like it, it's more likely to be a problem in PvP worlds and scenarios where you do mm. just have the option to one click teleport out. Whilst uh, Deep Wild, it probably won't be as big of an issue since it is already a bit of a glass cannon setup. And then if it's changed to make you take more damage, it will most likely definitely not be used. As, as far as Tribrid, the set's actually really strong because there's not another piece of armor really that you can just camp the or two items of it and it will give you a bonus. Um, you yeah. only have to worry about the helm changes. And obviously if you want to go extra, you can do the ammies and the gloves and stuff. But uh, for Tribrid, I think it's... I mean, I think it'd be kind of nice to have. So you won't have to do like the five, six ways. You can just do like a three way and be really strong. Yeah, I mean, that's already what the meta kind of is with like Crystal, Ancestral, and then having like something like an Ancient God Sword or like a Volatile. Some really interesting points. I like the idea of moving away from damage reduction into damage taken, especially. Um, and also for what it's worth, may as well just bring it out now. Given what we've seen on the beta, it's, well, it's not very likely. We will be making changes to those sets um, and how they work. And the initial thought was to focus more on accuracy as opposed to damage increase so that we're not massively amplifying the KO potential, but we are changing up how consistent fights feel in terms of damage. Um, how do you feel about that? Maybe if it was increased accuracy, a slight boost to damage with the damage increased against other styles as well. I I like that person. We had a discussion about this on my stream with, with Asper, West Ham, and, um, and Kemp Q. In terms of, like, if you start pushing the max hits to almost, like, 100, then it can also be a bit frustrating where people can just, you know, get, get one hit, basically. And I'm sure being in the wilderness as a PVM or someone else, it'll be quite annoying. No, you can just die to that. But um, a, a lot of the annoying part about um, PKing for a lot of these, these players, like Dino West Ham at the top of their game, when they go against people that are also really, really good, people don't die because everyone knows how to eat. And there's an RNG element, of course, when you, if you do hit the accuracy roll, you then got to hit the number roll between zero and your max hit. So the more consistent hits, the more chance you have for that momentum. Same in, in PvP, if I go PKing and I hit like zero on, on KO or HP X amount of times, it gets frustrating. But if you're consistently hitting that damage more, and you've got more opportunities to kill someone, then um, I think it's uh, really interesting too. You don't really, I don't really want to see them see it replace like Torva or like the best in slot currently, which costs like a bill or whatever, because I think that has a really important part in the game as well. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, I want, to, I want to have that balanced as well. Yeah, I think I'll sit on the fence on that because I, I'm honestly not against either the accuracy or the extra max hits. I think 90 is very high. Uh, it should probably be dumped to something more like I don't know 86 at the most, but. Me, personally, I'm not really against max hits. I feel like a large problem is that people aren't dying. But like you said, if the accuracy is increased, then that could also result in like the same thing, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. The one concern I'd have with the accuracy is, and again, I don't know how it would play out, but the Bofa that's currently in the game, um, if anything, that's fighting that, it feels too accurate. And it's one of the most annoying things to fight. Uh, as a tribrid because you'll be praying the right thing and you'll just keep getting it 20s through prayer uh, like constantly no matter what gear you're in um so i would be worried if it did go down that route uh maybe like overheads have to be reworked or something because if you're praying the right thing you shouldn't in my opinion be getting hit constant like 20 pluses uh 30 pluses in this case yeah the both as accuracy is quite annoying and i think the the raids free weapon as well that's getting released now is going to be of similar accuracy to it yeah there would be scope to have a night a set where while you're wearing it the overhead prayers effect of incoming damage is changed we'd be able to affect that as well as all the other things we've ever done before so rather than you know the 60 percent change that overheads normally do 
they could be made to do something different associated with what you're wearing in some situations, if that would be of any use at all. I think that's really interesting. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna reduce damage by doing things correct, then if you do things wrong, you should also be punished for it. And that's kind yeah. of what this armor set is meant to kind of emulate, is that it's very low defense, so you're gonna get hit back a lot if you're not doing things right. But you've got more opportunity that if you are doing things right, you're gonna get that momentum and get the opportunity to turn for your opponent. So reworking prayers with that in mind if you are gonna gonna change them at any point to you know if you do things right to take less damage then if you do things wrong you should also be uh be more impacted so it like well, works both ways with, high risk high reward that would certainly go with the uh, damage magnifier effect that you guys were discussing a few minutes ago some really good points raised there actually it'll be interesting to see how that would play out with the protection prayers as well I'm sure we're going to have many interesting conversations over the next few days, Ash. Um, okay, the next question comes in from Mr. G, and I'm just going to say this is a question from someone. It doesn't represent at least uh, my views or other people's views here. <laughs> it's not a bad question, but they've said, what wilderness PvP changes that does not include a PvMer-based ecosystem would you want to see added to increase frequency of PKR versus PKR fights? Back in the day, wilderness was great when everyone would go Mage Bank, low-level Varrock East or Hill Giants with the sole intention of looking for fights. But now we have a pvm based system which has changed this. Curious if there are any thoughts on how to create PKS-specific hotspots again. <laughs> Other than Bounty Hunter. Uh, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where do I start? Um, it's a, I would say with the question, um, how they mention how it used to work. Um, I think a Big reason why it used to work is because it was based on a sort of a hunting PVM system. Um, they might have not realized it, but like East Dragons, for example, the, there would always be a PK hunting the guys at East Dragons and then the PKs hunt the PK that's doing that. Like that's how it always used to work. Um, as far as trying to incentivize, incentivize PKs to look for PKs, I, I don't know if the wilderness should be in my opinion i don't think the wilderness should be for that um i think that's where the pvp arena for example uh will come into play um i think the wilderness should remain sort of as it obviously as it is but with uh, more of an incentive on the the pvmers and the low tier pkers to get involved because at the moment yeah it's just a few pkers trying to hunt wherever they can because it's quite quiet um yep. I'd have to agree. I, I think the wilderness ecosystem of, um, you know, high risk, high reward is such a unique part of our MMO and it's always been iconic about RuneScape as well since the since the start of it, really, since the wilderness was first put in. And uh, I don't want to see that that change, of course, and um, I, both as like, you know, a, a Iron Man that goes into the wilderness to do things. I know it can be frustrated being hunted down, but that's kind of the the thrill of being in the in the wild. It's all, um, you know, high risk, high reward and such. But in terms of what changes I like to see, um, as opposed to just changing that um i used to pk back in pre-oc uh, back with the old bounty hunter system bounty hunter worlds and we used to have like a clan wars bank um west of the east dragons we used to have fist of guffix bank and those little areas or the bounty hunter bank um northwest of chaos temple those banks kind of created hot spots because they they felt like there were safer areas you could go into and, and restock and then obviously for example the clan wars bank a lot of nubia pkers would go there and then go hunt the the green dragons, um, you know, especially the loot key system now, you could kill a few green dragon um, hunters and, and make a couple hundred K very easily. And then PKs would then come and hunt those those individuals. So I think um, without chain, I hope to see more wilderness uh, rewards happening in, in, in the future, such as the wilderness boss rework as well, of course, and, and wilderness slayer maybe getting some changes as well eventually. But um, banks, I think, could be a really, a really nice way to create those hotspots. Um, we've not seen in a long time being being looked at yeah uh i think i largely agree with dino as well although i will say uh the pvm based ecosystem is it's a thing that i brought up multiple times as well but it's like it's the only thing that has been tested i feel like in runescape's history so to say it's the only thing that works i don't necessarily know if that's true i feel like you could test other things as well just to see if that would go anywhere obviously i, I will say the uh the increased pj timer and stuff like that hasn't been the greatest hit but regardless i'm open to like test other things than just increasing the ecosystem and like adding 
best in slot methods or best in slot like uh, or best money makers to the wilderness i think there are other ways to approach it as well uh, at the same time i also like now with the increased pj timer in the wilderness i truly don't see the point of like pvp worlds for example uh if you were to add just the being able to attack 15 combats up and down in like one world in the wilderness i feel like that would serve the same purpose and at the same time i think players get attracted to something when they see other players just running towards it or like uh like hot spots are created just by passing by and seeing other players engage in pvp and maybe wanting to try it out themselves uh, I, I feel like if you hop to a pvp world you already know what you're doing there uh, it's kind of I don't know it's only really attracting the people that want to go there to pvp in the first place whilst other players might walk by the wilderness and want to try it out that is assuming though Maybe that the right. servers could also handle that many people being in a world sure I, I wonder if there's maybe something that ties up both what you said west ham and pure spam with the addition of banks for example maybe one of the banks in deeper wilderness the area around it has um different combat level bracket that replicates what exists in pvp worlds so that that would then create that hot spot that currently only exists in pvp worlds but by virtue of it being in the wilderness it may then also attract others to be around that area and fight in that area outside of those zones for example and maybe something like that what it's what it's worth the uh, our former colleague who pitched the enclave in the first place was basing the, on it on the idea of the Clan Wars Bank, a safe island in the middle of the wilderness that would have banks and also um, some incentive for people to spill out of it and fight in the vicinity. Now, the Enclave is, of course, very different from what we remember of Clan Wars Bank. I mean, for a start, it's got some actual portals on the sides rather than just you being able to walk out and fight people directly and some uncommon behavior about what you can do in the immediate buffer zone right outside it perhaps it was more complex than it strictly needed to be though and maybe if it had had much simpler edges like the clan walls bank that i worked on all those years ago um maybe it would serve that kind of purpose a little better we i mean i think it does have Oh, so, no, sorry. Uh, apologies for cutting you off. But no, I, th I think it does serve that purpose quite well, actually. Yeah. If you look at worlds that are populated, such as the LMS worlds, uh, there actually has been people PKing in that area. Uh, it's not insanely active, but it's active to the point where PKers would go there because they know it's it an active a hot spot. hotspot and stuff like that. Yeah. So it has served that purpose quite well. Obviously, with the little extra walk when you do pass the portal still being a safe zone uh, might, might have added a little bit of complexity to it. I think most players understand that by now. I think the main problem is just that it is in level 13 wilderness? Something like that regardless. Uh, which means that if you get TB there, then you have to tank to the Zami Mage or you can tank to the Revenant Cave and try to get like a freeze hug. I guess in this case now, you can just freeze hug anyway. But it's not exactly a place where you can go like uh, just regular Venge style PK and without just getting TB'd. Thank you, that is actually quite reassuring about it. It's... Okay, the next question. Uh, these are back to. Oh, sorry, did you... someone want to say something? No. Did I cut you off? No, I was going to say with the thing with uh, Ferox, um, and I, I'm sure it must have gone on back in the day as well, um, but there's a lot of. So there's like a big dark side to it as well. A lot of luring goes on uh, at Ferox with items such as like Ring of Coins. Um, it's quite mad how uh, how common it is. If you go to like the random world, you will see someone be like a Ring of Coins on the bridge to try and get people out, and it does work quite effectively. Um, so we've added more areas like that. Obviously, I'm assuming more things like mm -hmm. that will take place as well. And then... Honestly, I cannot imagine the ring of coins being introduced with any other expectation i forget <laughs> where it came about from but um what other purpose could there be for a thing like that <laughs> yeah no let's say i'm i'm not yeah. obviously i'm not for it but i'm not against that because in my opinion the worldie should be you know if you get skull trick you get skull trick things like that but the way the game's going if it was weird putting like a pk skull prevention on but then adding more uh safe areas in the worldie where you're kind of encouraging lures and stuff that makes sense it certainly makes sense. Um, 
I suppose the kind of lure where you fell for somebody who's disguised as a pile of coins via the item that turns you into a pile of coins, um, we might consider that to be on them for not realising that it's got a white dot on the minimap or something like that. Whereas um, the tricks that involve, you know, knowing that somebody's timer might run out at this particular moment and or knowing that if you that, that those kinds of attacks are not affected by the um, attack option reprioritization toggle um, that's more players struggling to handle our user interface and while handling the user interface like a pro is definitely part of the skill set um, I do see a distinction between that kind of thing that leads to you getting scold versus using the disguise for what oh, I still can't think of any other purpose it could have ever had. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with the Ring of Third Age as being able to just disguise yourself as a Third Age longsword, for example. There's uh, a lot of items in the game that almost yeah. seem like they were made for luring. I think the PK skull prevention change, though, that's fixed all of that. I don't really see it happening so much. Used to be in the PvP worlds, seeing people try to do that against the unsculled PKOs, but they don't get hit by it anymore, so it's not as much of an issue as it used to be. Some... Sur surprisingly, no, it's still quite bad. <laughs> At Ferox, anyway, really? there's still a hole. Yeah, yeah, there's... Um, the, well, yeah, it, it, the it thing with... hasn't solved everything. The thing with Ferox no? is their class is safe zones, um, so people think, you know, they go to the bridge, they, it's safe, um, but what teams do is they TB themselves and then appear as like a ring of coins but because they're TB the player can then attack them without oh in the safe to. zone gotcha. yeah because it's a safe zone but if the oh, player that they try and click on is TB'd they attack and then yeah um so if anything it in my opinion that's more like tricking the player than skull tricking ever was um I mean with the, so with the PK skull like prevention it. at this point it's a bit of a yeah, so I think people just haven't really. Measures, everyone, you know, not everyone's realised that it's uh, that it's a thing that exists. It was a you know, relatively recent addition to the game, anyway. But I'm, I'm also with like everyone else on this one. There are certain school tricking methods that I personally wasn't fond of, but falling for a cash stack on the floor outside of what is a safe zone in a dangerous area is just asking, well, for you to lose your items and. If you haven't got PK school prevention enabled, um, and that's just, and I wouldn't really mind so much to see that continue happening. <laughs> um, I'm just conscious that we've got a, a fair few questions to get through and only a small amount of time. So I'm going to try and um, just get through, I'll get through this one last question, which is more of an open one. And then we'll go over the individual items um, in brief, if that's okay. Um, yeah. The first one comes from Captain Alpha Walrus, and they've said, if PvP can get special workarounds for quest and minigame rewards, why then why not let regular players get workarounds for rewards in the wilderness? For example, being able to get the dragon pickaxe from skilling content like the dragon harpoon and axe. I think in all likelihood we will let um, players get the dragon pickaxe from such content. Zalcano frequently gets suggested for it. The volcanic mine also springs to mind. Rather nastier, that one. I quite like it for that reason. And um, I do kind of see that as part of the compromise where we do more in the wilderness for PvP as making, in the case of the wilderness bosses, it's probably going to make them more dangerous. Um, while, you know, that's got to come with some reward to make it war warranted, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the form of that particular item. I mean, it's not the most expensive item in the world anyway. <laughs> So, perhaps as part of the compromise, um, we would move that item to be available elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the whole dragon pickaxe thing has been like one of the major arguments for almost why people dislike PKs. Well, I, I mean, I can't speak for every PKer, but. It's not like we chose for there to be a dragon pickaxe dropped from Callisto. I think most PKers could care less if the best in slot pickaxe comes from Callisto or not. Uh, like, I'd honestly rather see it be moved so it can't be used as like almost like a hinder for PvP updates. 
Yeah, I fully agree. I uh, I don't know one peak air that uh, would be against the sort of dragon pig X being obtained somewhere else. Um, rather than the wordy. Yeah, like, the best in slot stuff, I understand the argument, and I wouldn't be opposed either about moving outside. I think the high risk, high reward, that's the important part of the wilderness that needs to be, like, adjusted and needs to be that compromise needs to be, needs to be there. It doesn't have to be in the form of a pickaxe for, for mining or for guardians room in chambers. Um, it, it can be lots of other things, including, like, PvP-specific rewards, which there are a plethora of, of ideas and, and concepts for, so... Thanks, that's very helpful. We have also, of course, seen players saying, well, if you take away that unique reason for going in the wilderness, you'll take, you'll kill the traffic even more. And yeah, there may be people going in there just to get that thing. Um, I'm sure there are, because that's where it comes from. But there are other things in there as well, and there can be more. Yeah. So as part of the compromise where we're making stuff likely more dangerous in other places, maybe that pickaxe can be part of the deal where it goes elsewhere. <laughs> yeah no i definitely right. agree and i feel like i don't want uh one specific item to like hinder pvp updates in the future based on the argument well like a side of the players that doesn't really exist i think there's a few pkers that maybe care about it but most don't Okay, good to hear it. All right, we've got a few of the items then that we can quickly go through. And I think there are some images to go alongside these. So the first item, we have spoke about a few of them, so um, maybe we can just recap. But these are the wristbands of the arena, showing the current concept art. Um, as a whole, these are the replacements for the... Essentially replacements for Barrow's Gloves that are somewhat pure friendly with a 20 defense requirement for the base version. And then you can get slightly higher accuracy at 41, uh, at 40 defense, sorry. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on the wristbands of the arena? Um, as, as a pure PK, an edge star PK, I think these are pretty well balanced, to be honest. Um, currently, there's not really much incentive to go 20 defense, aside from a lot of multi-clans and pure clans saying 20 defense or 30 defense is the viable, like, the top you can go for, so people get it for mystics or whatever, but there's not really that much worthwhile things to go for for 20 defense. And even with this item, with Barrow's Gloves at 20, the 19 defense levels from one, um, mathematically speaking, like it's not like super worthwhile going for for a lot of players, but there are people that do like the 20 defense build because it's iconic from back in the day, and maybe one day we'll get you know corrupt status or, or whatever here in the game, which will also require 20 defense. I'm all for meta shifts and kind of um, allowing like certain people's accounts to be a bit stronger. Uh, I think these are these are fine and balanced. Um, 20 defense doesn't seem like uh, too big of an issue to be honest, and you've got the the 41 defense ones as well, which give the zerkers a little bit. A little bit something better so um yeah I, I think these are fine to be honest these are, these are well balanced how do you feel dino are you raring to go no 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 i uh when i originally saw him obviously i was a little bit against the sort of a lot of the rewards seem like replacements of existing things in the game um but as it's sort of gone on i have i don't really have anything against that now um i think it would be nice to have like uh, ian says something for 20 defense um to hopefully try and encourage people to make different builds again because at the moment it's the same few builds that have been around for years mm -hmm. um so no i've i quite like them to be honest yeah i think they add a bit more variety so uh, the 20 defense bracket i'm pretty sure it was changed to last yeah. Uh, yeah and i don't have anything against the design they look uh kind of similar to like what goliath gloves you uh used to look like pre uc mm. but yeah i think it just adds variety in my opinion Okay, great stuff. Thank you. Let's uh, move on to the next part then, which is just a discussion. We don't have an image for this. But humble piety and humble chivalry. Now, we did originally have both of these prayers as uh, no defense requirements, but in the rewards beta, you'll have noticed that humble piety now requires 40 defense. And that will be um, mentioned in the next iteration of the blog that we have coming out once the feedback from the actual beta settled but yeah humble piety 40 defense and humble chivalry being available at one defense uh what do you think should i start i, get, I yeah, guess yeah I, I don't know i've used yeah, to like camera order now um well 
and again as a pure pk um it's nice to get you know pures to have a little bit more buff like over the years um a lot of the new updates and the new like best slot gear obviously is has that high defense requirement 70 75 and such so the med level build has gotten stronger and stronger whilst the zerks and the pures have kind of been left behind we've had a few updates here and there here and there like the, yeah, the manacles and such but nothing too huge so i think it does, definitely does close the gap and you'll make a lot of those players really happy as well um obviously the the med levels still have rigor and, and augury too um, i think the change making piety only 40 defense and not one defense is probably a good move because pures are going to get a lot of a lot of a buff from just the chivalry itself and from having the um the new void equivalent set that's coming out mm -hmm. um yeah I, I i like the change a lot um and i think it'll make a lot of zerka builds uh, really strong again and kind of again mix up the meta and have some pros and cons for making different builds so yeah i look forward to seeing the change I think just yeah, uh, one thing that I've seen. Well. Sorry, West Ham. Um, but one thing that I've seen a lot of players just fail to mention in feedback, where they've said about how you shouldn't give them to accounts that have, you know, got one defense. They they chose them themselves and so on and so forth. They are just essentially taking the same name and graphics, um, which is less resource than having to make like an entire new prayer yeah. that would have to fit into a book, for example, that you would probably want to have unlocked via a quest or a, a new big piece of content that has law surrounding it but don't sleep on the fact that these prayers still require the prayer level requirement that they have and I, as far as i'm aware at least pures don't typically go to get 60 prayer or 70 prayer for example on zerkas you know you'll normally sit at 52 at smite and leave it at that unless you're then going up to the next tier of brackets to have access to rigor and augury for example so it will still be a, a, a change in combat levels to, to some degree, I believe, at least. Yeah, no, it will add a couple of combat levels for sure. Uh, and at the same time, I, I agree with Ian. I mean, I think it will add some variety. It'll also make Zerkas, who largely have been quite a dead bracket uh, past few years, uh, be able to fight back against med levels at least. I think in our last scenario, so like Deep Wild or maybe Rev Cave, it won't really stand a chance still, but like at least you have the element that you can hit close to the same as them uh, and be able to KO them at least. Maybe not outlast them, but at least have a decent chance of fighting back. Hmm. Yeah, no, I was uh, I was definitely, again, originally against the prayers, um, but <laughs> going through all of these, I was originally against this, um, but I think with when Piety was one defense, I wasn't a fan of that at all. Uh, I felt like I should definitely be locked behind some sort of a defense and that's been moved to 40. Um, I think that's a lot better. With, I still think I would have rather have seen a new prayer, but when you actually look at the numbers, I understand why you haven't because there's not a lot of difference in the percentages between, say, if you have steel skin, ultimate strength on, and then like chivalry. Um, so there was very like little room to actually add a new prayer in there. It'd be like 17% or 16%. Um, mm -hmm. So I can fully see why it's just sort of just reused the. The other ones. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm going to jump to, for production's sake, I'm going over to question number 17 on the list now about humble piety and chivalry. Um, and the question essentially just says, since we've had humble piety and humble chivalry potentially being added, would you guys also consider adding in a humble version of both rigor and augury? Um, so I, I'm biased on this because I think both Rigor and Augury should have been one defense from the get-go like they were pre-EOC. I think they were balanced. They could be balanced to, to be those, but again, I'm a, I'm a pure, so I'm obviously going to be biased here. Um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it um, if they were if it was just usable in PvP, of course. But uh, that, that's how it was back in back in pre-EOC in general. Um, those prayers required one defense. They didn't require 70. They were polled to be 70, and it, it did pass all those years ago when Chambers came out, so I don't see it ever being changed. But in a PvP scenario, Again, med levels are so much stronger and you get all the defense, you get all the gear benefits of having 70-75 defense. Zerka is a bit a bit weak, so um, I think at some point having Rigor and Augury uh, for Zerkas again would probably close the gap a little bit and give them that opportunity to be like quite high offense but still having that, that less defense and quite a lot of restrictions in terms of gear. I mean, this is under the assumption that uh, Humble, Rigor and Augury wouldn't provide any defensive stats, right? Yeah, they would not. It would just yeah. be the offensive stats only. I guess in that case, I can see that being a thing, yeah. 
uh, I wouldn't be too opposed to that. If As long as they don't provide any of the defensive boosts, then yeah, I don't have a problem with that, I suppose. Although it might take the point out of making a med level uh, out. Med levels is pretty much the only thing people are using these days. I mean, you still get the benefit of like Arims and Buckler and, and loads of defense gear, which makes a and crystal armor, which does make a big difference, in, especially in Outlast fights. Like, defense isn't, you know, doesn't doesn't do anything, doesn't do nothing. It is is quite significant. Same with like just mentioning there about having lower defense accounts, having access to everyone augury. I'm not saying that Pures and Zerk should be able to use best in slot everything and wear Torva suddenly, because yeah, you are restricted, but. The whole purpose of those accounts is to be high offense, low defense, glass cannons, and over the years, we uh, haven't been as strong as we used to be, so that's why I'm not as opposed to uh, seeing those changes come in at some point. I think I'd love, rather see uh, a particularly augury, um, because I think that's incredibly strong. Um, I would like to see him stay at 70 defense. Um, mm -hmm. Because again, I, I like there being reasons to be a certain account build, and I feel like West Ham said that them prayers are a very big reason why people choose to go uh, med level, or obviously it gives a big advantage to mains as well. Um, I don't really like the idea of making accounts that, for example, are pure, not as strong, but closing the gap on a med level. I think meds should be a lot more powerful, uh, personally. I kind of agree. Uh... I don't know. I I think it's a basically an either or situation. Like you either get piety and chivalry, or you get rigor and augury. Hmm. Interesting. Well, for what it's worth, I know that internally we were considering allow it, like offering a humble rigor and augury in the next iteration of the blog that's due to go out. Uh, but perhaps after this discussion, there's a little bit more thought that needs to go into that, um, especially with us not wanting to remove, as you say, that need, or so to speak, the current builds that exist purely because of that, you know, with the with the med range. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we have time to go over just one last part, which I think is the Calamity chest and breaches, and then we are going to have to wrap up i believe so if we can get the image of well let's just show the um headgear set at the same time because it's kind of all intertwined um so that's the seiko core of some malma's headgear set um oh we actually have an image here of the uh calamity chest and breaches as well so uh what do you what do you think about these items and one thing that i'm gonna ask whilst we discuss this as well um, are there defense requirements? Because originally these pieces, the, the chest and breaches, um, required 50, well, it was, it's one defense, it was 55 and 78 for the different tiers, and it's now 70 defense, 50 defense, and one defense. Um, I personally think it should be 145 and 75, because... I, I know mixing up the mesh and like making people get cool extra defense levels for like to change things up is uh is, is pretty cool in that but people have had these builds for so many years i don't have a zerker personally um but i know a lot of people have this 45 defense build in their mind and people get very attached to their character and they've been playing the same account for so many years now and to suddenly say you'll get five defense to use the, this item um and that's mm -hmm. you know that's that's the only reason to get it um it, it would still be worth it i think to get those five extra defense levels but you know, for one combat difference, like, is it really going to change much just for, for having an extra couple defense levels increase? Uh, I think you'd probably displease more people than you would please people by doing this change. So just Doesn't to make people happy. Point go both ways there, though. If you say if it's it, only yeah, one it does, combat yeah. level, then it's only one yeah, combat level that you've got to get, right? So the, exactly. it's interesting that you've raised that point yourself, actually, because it was how I was going to wrap up with things. Now, Originally, obviously, the armor pieces were set at 55 defense, which is 10 defense yeah. levels higher than 45. Uh, and we lowered that to 50 as a compromise because of the complaints, you know, around existing builds that mm -hmm. would then have to adjust and change to be able to use these items. But the reality is, let's face it, the gear is way too powerful to be given to the hands of existing 45 builds without any sacrifice. And the sacrifice being that one defense level and then creating a new kind of like build. So I think the options are we either heavily nerf the items so that they're not extremely strong at 45 defense, but they're okay, or 
people just look at it as a, okay, you know, if I want this extra strength now, I have to go for those extra defense levels. Because the other part of the problem is that if we go to 45 defense, then what about the void accounts that are at 42 defense? And then say, well, it's only one combat level. You may as well drop it down to 42 so that I can also use the armor because I've had this account and I don't want to change it now. Uh, and at what point do you say enough is enough? And you know what, if you want the extra power, you are going to have to get extra levels. Um, as opposed it's, to it being yeah. the same way that it has for the last 15 years. Yeah, I, I can I can see both sides of the argument, to be honest. But, like, for the nostalgia game that Old School is for so many players, like, 45 has always been, like, the Zerka build. Um, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't personally affect me. Um, I, don't, I think if I was personally in that position, I probably would get, as a PvPer, I would get 50%. It would be worthwhile getting the 50%, 50, sorry, 50 defense. But... It would suck for a lot of people who have always had that 45, like that clean 99 combat or that clean 100 combat, whatever build they are. They'd be like 101 suddenly and they'd be like, oh man. It's, and it's not that deep. I, don't, I personally don't think it's that deep, but I think a lot of players do feel that way, um, which is why it's just something to consider. Um, I mean, there can't be yeah. enough of a gap as well to the point where like, if you're 55, most of the players are probably going to go, well, I already have 70 prayer. Now I have 55 defense too. What's the point in just not going to 70? Uh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. 50 sounds a bit more adjusted, uh, a bit more fair as well. I, I do agree with you, user. I don't think it should be a thing that like everyone should get with their pre-existing builds. You should have to go a little bit outside of the build. Uh, I think, like you said, the original was 78 defense, right, for the max one. Yeah, yeah, that that to me, yeah. like 78 defense is fine. It's three defense levels. It's the same way with like uh, VLS, for example. You can use that yeah, 75. I didn't really agree with that either. I kind of felt like it might as well just be 78. Yeah, it's, it's fair. I, I see both sides of it. Um, I just know a lot of players that have 45 are going to be like, man, I've got it at 50 now, but hey, you're right. If, if you want the extra power. <laughs> You know, that's a sacrifice. One combat level is only one combat level. It's not It's not really, like, super deep, but um, it is still, like, an iconic thing that players have got an attachment to. So I, I see their, their side of it, too. I see both sides. I, I would say with that, the guys that are saying about the Zerka build, the Zerk is still obviously going to be there. Um, yeah. Everything the same is still going to be there. This would be seen as something new, I would that's imagine, right. anyway. Um, yeah. Which is why I was okay with it being 55 originally, but 50 is fine as well. Um, I agree with West Ham that I more care about the lift of the 75 cap. Um, I would quite like seeing items require 78 attack, 80 attack, uh, 80 defense, things like that. Because um, at the moment, everything that stops is 75. So mm -hmm. I would, yeah. that's what I'd more push towards rather than the sort of 40 50 mark. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I, I think with these armor sets. So I was just saying, I think that these armor sets in particular, sometimes the other updates have been suggested that have been like 80 attack or 85 attack or whatever, and it's sometimes not worth it, but this armor, to be fair, it is very strong, so it does seem quite balanced if you want to increase the, uh, the requirement. Sorry. Yeah, I, would, I was just going to say pretty much similar to that, is that it, it is a jump up in power, and just popping that on, maybe it's not the best route. But there is interesting point that you raised, Dino. Maybe there is more that we could do in the requirements that aren't just focused around defense. I know um, Modash was keen to look into that. We had a quick chat before the stream started. So um, I would just say look for the next iteration of the blog, at least, and what changes have been made following the feedback from the beta. But uh, that is, unfortunately, all we have time for today. We've run over by 10 minutes. I'm about to get my butt kicked by production. So I'm going to have to wrap things up here. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to quickly run over the game, the announcements, exclamation mark game update, where you can try your hands on the new PvP arena rewards. Um, try all the new equipment and let us know your thoughts. Uh, there's also more info on the League 3 rewards and Pulse 76 changes, so exclamation mark game update for that. Then we have exclamation mark launcher. The new Jagex launcher is in open beta. You can access old school RuneScape and all of your other Jagex favorites, all from one place. RuneLight will be coming to that soon as well. You can check out all the information and download the launcher with exclamation mark launcher. I want to say a massive thank you to Pure Spam, West Ham and Dino for joining us. It has been a great insight to hear some of your thoughts on the rewards. Hopefully I'll catch you all streaming, playing with them again or limit testing them uh, over the next few days. Do you have any uh, closing words? Thank you for having us. It's been a fun discussion. I'm sure we'll all jump in calls again on our own streams and continue to discuss and 
and figure stuff out. But uh, yeah, everyone's got different opinions, and uh, we all just want the same thing, right? And that's for PvP to, to thrive and for everyone to, to enjoy the game. And we appreciate you guys as a team, the old school team, looking to change PvP. And, and you know, this commitment we've seen from you guys, especially in recent months, has been uh, really great. So keep it up, team, and thank you for that as well. Oh, yeah, basically, what you said. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of summed it down to the point where, like, I don't know what else to say. But uh, it's been great seeing Jagex pay attention to PvP for sure. Uh, obviously, yet again, like Ian said, it is just all opinions. No one knows for sure if we're right or wrong. So take it with a grain of salt. I might not have the opinion that you have, but hopefully that's not enough to, like, make someone, I don't know, hate me or me hate you. <laughs> I don't know, I found out the hard way. If you have a different opinion, people uh, <laughs> people won't be happy with it. Um, but no, I would agree that with PvP uh, this year, a lot more has been done with it than the last sort of four years, I'd say. Um, so it's, it's reassuring to see, even though I don't agree with a lot, of, a lot of the things, but it's nice to see people are putting uh, actually a bit of thought behind uh, updates regarding PvP this year. Well, hopefully there'll be plenty more of them to come. Um, we'll just have to see what happens the rest of this year. Um, yeah, well, thanks to the three of you. And then lastly, I just want to say a big thanks to yourself, Modash, for joining me here. We appreciate you giving some uh, good responses to some of the questions. And also a big thanks to Mod Sphere and Druid behind the scenes for making everything work and showing us elemental runes three times in a row. And then lastly, <laughs> to the mods that have helped out in the chat as well, moderating things. Uh, that's going to be it. Thank you, everyone at home for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your uh, evening. And if for whatever reason we don't speak before, have a great weekend. Bye.